So this leads us into chapter 25. Everett Zelfry, the faceless renegade. And Volk makes it back to the tailor shop that Ilya was getting her dress fitted at. He goes in, leaving Fane outside. And he planned this. And he says that Ilya looks absolutely beautiful. And one of the designs that she points out to him was that she had star moss fixed into the dress. And I was very curious with this because Volk wasn't gone for that long. A couple of hours, probably, when it's all said and done. So did they have... A star moth dress, or is there, you know, Eldrin that somehow lets you create and weave material and fabric that they can make one in such a short time? So I was very curious on the logistics of that transaction. I believe that it said that they had brownies working in the shop, which were essentially like cobblers that had elves that were working after night, but there were actual Eldrin in the shop to help with the dresses. So I believe, yes. That Which, makes that makes more sense, <laughs> right? Because just a couple hours, you can only imagine how much work they would have to do in that time. Yes, Volk says to Ilya as basically the nail in the coffin of "You look stunning." Is William would be proud. It's it's a sweet moment. It is like you say the pushing over the edge. I would say, but very much I think it does kind of solidify the ways that they're going to go separately, and that you know Ilya's pursuing the right path with the stress. They leave the shop and Ilya is not happy that Volk has invited Fane to accompany them back to the hotel. And that unfortunately, this is very quickly realized that this was a bad idea. And one of the most awkward moments for Volk because they are just dead silent the entire time. And this is another naive moment for Volk that he didn't put together the, you know, her biggest goal her biggest focus is always Callisto and Fane is now somebody that she's supposed to get along with but who was ties to Callisto and it just feels like he he missed the ball on that one right good intentions so Volk suggests that Fane talks to Zelfry for training because Fane hasn't ever received any formal training as an arcanist and and Volk asks Fane hey are you going to even compete in the tournament and he's like I'd be in the journeyman class because of how long I've been bonded, but really don't know how to use my magic other than what I've done a little bit that I have done. Yeah, his only real training, and that's probably a stretch of a term for it, is just what they practiced on the boat, which I think was more some rough and ready sparring rather than any true pointers or teaching or perfecting. Yeah, it's probably just the, okay, you can turn invisible, turn invisible. You don't have to fight. Use your ice. There you go. It's <laughs> it's cold now. <laughs> so this is where we find out that Fane absolutely hates Zelfry with a passion. So Fane believes that Zelfry is a renegade pirate that turned his back on all other pirates. So now it's not because Fane doesn't like Zelfry. It's because Zelfry was a pirate and then is no longer a pirate. So he defected. But Fane defected too. So... Kind of not sure where the upsetness here comes in here. Fane has heard apparently a lot about Zelfry as a pirate. And he said that Zelfry and Callisto were actually really good friends. And Fane pleads to not be able to be left alone with Zelfry for fear of his own life. And he even mentions that when Zelfry turned himself over to Callisto, it was almost more of a joyous situation than a hostage situation. They were happy to see each other and celebrating before... They started torturing him. And then once we finally get back to the hotel, Delphi is there and Fane instantly goes invisible. Delphi grabs Volk and they are on their way to go see Thiessen. And this is where chapter 25 ends off. And we do thank you all for listening. Just want to remind everybody that we post our new episodes every Wednesday morning around 11 Eastern, 10 o'clock Central. And for those that are out in Pacific, 8 o'clock Pacific Standard. We're on all podcasting platforms. And if you haven't already switched over to YouTube music, then you definitely need to get that done because Google Podcasts is going to no longer be a thing. We are on YouTube as well for video. And we want to thank our editor, Dan Mackison, for including pictures and links to everything. If you do want to reach out to us on Gmail, uh, we're at frithguildpod at gmail.com. We're on Facebook and other social medias at Frith Guild Podcast. Again, we want to thank the Frith Chronicles Wiki as that is a great resource. And again, everything is linked down below to for the podcast and in YouTube. 
And I want to remind everybody that we don't have a solid date quite yet for the Urban Fantasy, the time marked Warlock yet for Shammy Stovall. But again, once we get updates, we will certainly include that as well. Scott, was there anything else you'd like to add tonight? No, I, I think that closes it. All right. Well, thank you all for listening and we'll see you next time.